feel like I'm forgetting something. So now I've got one, two, three, four sharks. I'm with that attitude, and I'm ready to jump in. Welcome to the vlog. So I'm on my morning walk right now. I picked up a Starbucks, which I hate to say is like my third cup of coffee of the day. So woke up pretty early this morning, banged out a lot of editing. Now I like to come out, get around like five to 7,000 steps out of the way. Uh, so now I'm going home to have uh, breakfast, which is the same breakfast I've been having every single day for the past like two, two and a half weeks. And that is waffles. So ever since I did that ABC video, I've been having waffles every single morning for breakfast. A, because they taste amazing and B, because they keep me full for a very, very, very long time. And I want that today because you're gonna be having some higher calorie foods later on in the day. Uh, so I made one adjustment from that video where I put uh, oatmeal in it. I replaced that with uh, coconut flour, 20 grams of coconut flour. Uh, it's, it actually just adds a little more like moisture to it, makes it taste a little bit better. And it saves you, if that really matters, 40 calories. So. Gonna put this all together right now. It makes a lot of waffles for 530 calories. It's worth it. So we're gonna go in with 130 grams of egg whites to start. So we're gonna do the wet ingredients first. About 150 grams of cottage cheese. So I tried it with a Greek yogurt before. It doesn't really come out as well. So I just, I'd stick to cottage cheese if you can. So I like to use a uh, blue star, love the ISO smooth. So it's 120 calories, zero grams of fat and uh, 30 grams of protein. So I'm putting two scoops in, which is 60 grams of protein, which is pretty much majority of the protein in this meal. Absolutely love it. So it'll be at the top of the description down below at 10 e 10, save 10% off. So I'm using the ISO smooth vanilla cake batter, makes sense with waffles and it actually just tastes like cake too. So two scoops of that, which comes out to 66 grams. 68. We're gonna be spot on with our macros here. Come on, there we go. Now, 20 grams of the coconut flour. I love the smell of coconut flour. It makes it taste like more desserty. A lot of you guys actually ask me why I put coconut flour in my ice cream. It's for that reason. I kind of like, like the flavor, but it's not necessary. Then you got some cinnamon. I don't really weigh it or like measure it, just whatever I think. I feel like having that day looks about good. Again, for the stevia. Again, I don't really weigh it, just kind of sprinkle it in. Looks about right. And then last but not least, we go in with like a half a teaspoon of baking powder. And I don't blend it, I just stir it. I like kind of like the texture of the uh, cottage cheese inside of the batter. And that's it guys. So probably took me around like three minutes to put together and I'm gonna mix it up and that is our batter. So that is the consistency that you should be looking for. I have the waffle iron all heated up. I'm gonna grab the pan spray and we're gonna start putting them all together. So you don't want to fill the whole thing. You gotta be like a little bit careful, a little bit less than you think. And these waffles only take 90 seconds, so I usually time it. It's pretty easy for me to remember since that's my PR. That That's pretty much all you need in the batter. Close it and let us it do its thing for a minute and a half. And 90 seconds later, here we are. So looks good, very fluffy. As you guys can see, it's pretty thick too. And this is gonna probably make, this batch I just made, it's probably gonna make around like four to five of these. So it's a lot of food. Just continue to make them. Absolutely no batter gets left behind here. We're making a little, a little guy. This might be for Ollie, bite-sized waffle. I, I don't know if, it, is it weird I like to eat the batter raw? It's so good. Okay, look at the size of this thing. So I would have put Greek yogurt on it, but Ollie ate all of it. So I put way too much maple syrup on it. So the total calories of this is 538 calories. Macros are 97 grams of protein. Like you cannot beat this. 24 grams of carbs, eight grams of fiber, and five grams of fat. So I'm gonna eat this and I'm probably gonna be full until like 4 p.m. That's the one downfall of putting all the syrup on the top. The middle stuff doesn't get any love. That's the chemicals for the year. Okay, 
Okay, so very quickly before we head to the gym, I want to show you guys the merch because I've been getting a lot of questions about like sizing and stuff. So I'm six feet tall, actually six feet. So I guess I should say I'm six two online. So I'm six feet tall, 180 pounds, and I wear a large in everything. I can easily wear a medium. It'll be a little bit snugger by like a looser fit. Uh, so here is some of the stuff. This is not everything here, but this is like the train your heart tank top. It's really sick. It has like a, a raw cut. And then once you wear it more, it'll kind of like roll in a bit. On the back, you got the donut barbell unreal. Uh, so I basically with these pieces here, I want it to be like more like retro and like John Mayer like tour kind of shirts. And you, a lot of you guys actually got that, which I was pretty happy about. So here's like kind of like the cheat day shirt, be good on the back, kind of like retro diner with the donuts. Awesome. Same thing here with the long sleeve, same style. I love some like a uh, sleeve like designs. I like the tennis in here with like the checkers like that. This is my favorite one of the whole entire drop. And then very similar to the last um, vintage hoodie, pretty much the same thing. I uh, just in navy blue and then the new Tennyson logo across. So if you guys want to pick up anything here, link will be in the description, willtennyson.ca. If you don't want to, totally fine. I still love you guys anyway. Just thought I'd show you guys that. And uh, actually I'm gonna do a giveaway. So gonna be giving away a white shirt and a pink shirt. All you have to do is like the video and comment down below. What should you comment down below? Hmm. Ollie, what should they comment down below? You think so? Okay, fine. So all you have to do is comment down below what your favorite dessert is and then I'll choose one of you guys in the comments and you'll get one of these. The caffeine's only at like 800 milligrams today, so pre-workout necessary. So the plan was to show you guys a Will Tennyson leg day. Will, you train legs? Yeah, I do, hard to believe, I know. Uh, but we just switched the days around. So today, the day that we're filming, happens to just fall on a chest, back, and biceps day. But I will show you guys a leg day, I promise you guys that. So today, you're gonna be alternating between chest and back, finishing off with some biceps. I am super excited, because you know, we only have 24 hours in the day. One of those hours that we are in the gym, it's just 60 times around the clock. So you have no excuse to make every second count kill it. Okay, so we're gonna start this workout off with the bench press. We got a top set of four followed by four sets of eight for a back offset. So I've added top sets back into my routine because I like to lift heavy, strength's a priority to me. And if you wanna get strong, you get used to handling some more weight. So we're gonna do a top set of four at 295 pounds, back off the weight around like 20, 25%, and then bang out four sets of eight. Okay, so bench press is done, so now we're gonna do pull-ups, three sets of 12, and pull-ups by far have been affected the most from quarantine, because I haven't been able to do them for months, so I've lost a lot of strength on these, but my biggest tip to you guys if you're going back to the gym is just to don't try to start where you left off, gradually build back up, and it'll come back really quick. Okay guys, so the four main movements of the day are done. We did bench press, pull-ups, incline dumbbell press, and T-bar row. So after that, I like to do some more accessory work, higher reps, and some biceps. But before I do, I kind of just wanted to quickly announce that I'm super excited and honored to be a new Gymshark athlete. You know, it's been a long time since the work to finally make this official. And I'm so, so honored and excited to be part of the team. Everyone is so unreal, I love the vision. If you asked me a while back if this was gonna be a possibility, I would tell you that there's no way, you know, I've gone through a lot uh, physically. I used to be a bigger kid in high school. I got picked on quite a bit. I let that affect me, and I went through a pretty dark path of uh, self-confidence, and just I really like hurt my my body pretty bad. Then I started picking up the weights, fell in love. 
Um, my dream ever since I started to work out was to be part of the Gymshark team and it's just, it just means so much to me. I wouldn't be able to do it without you guys constantly watching me and supporting me. So thank you guys so much and I hopefully this shows you guys that if you're not happy with where you are or your situation right now, it doesn't mean that you can't change it because I was an underdog and I, I made it to here and you know I'm going to keep on pushing every day, trying my hardest and if you have a goal, go out every single day and get after it. You never know where it's going to take you. Okay, so the last thing for chest and back, what I usually like to do is superset chest and back. I usually go higher reps, not really focused on the weight here, more so the contraction. So I'm gonna do a plated high row, uh, three sets, 15 reps, then come do three sets of 15 reps of the cable fly again, just fully contract, uh, slow the movement down, not really focus on the weight here. Chest and back are done, so now we're gonna move on to biceps. We're gonna do barbell bicep curl, three sets, 12 to 15 reps. So on the last set, we're gonna do an intensity technique called cluster sets. So you're gonna do your full set basically to failure. You should be failing by the third set. Then you're gonna drop the weight, rest five, 10 seconds, pick up the weight, do another five. Drop the weight, rest 10 seconds, do another five. Keep on doing that until you can no longer do five, and that's the workout. So last exercise of the day, leave it all on the table here. Final set, it's gonna go complete failure here. We're gonna bang out fives until my arms can't move anymore. Okay, work out complete. I think we have a quick post-workout meal, and then we're heading downtown. So I grabbed a quick Chipotle bowl for the post-workout meal. Now we're heading downtown because I have knee tendonitis, specifically patellar tendonitis, also known as jumper's knee. A lot of basketball players, tennis players have it. Just pretty much a lot of athletes get it. It's an overuse injury, and I noticed I was starting to get some pain in my knee from doing Orange Theory before quarantine, just I guess from a lot of running on the treadmill consistently every day. But it wasn't until I did that 100,000 step video that it actually killed me. I almost couldn't walk for like two weeks after that video. And I tried a lot of things to help cure it and nothing's really helped it for the long term. So uh, I searched online and apparently acupuncture is really good for tendonitis. So we were gonna go to Mayo Detox downtown and see if it can help me out. So some of the strategies we're going to use is um, we're going to work on things directly on your quad that works on your tendon, but you also want to work on surrounding areas because your body never works um, independent of just one area. Okay. So we're going to hit your glutes, hit your little back, and then you want to stimulate those areas and then work towards just a full loading pattern. Okay. Yeah, so in your case here, you're going to want to uh, work on load management. In your case, we reduce the amount of running, yeah. but we would actually increase the amount of like strength training. So I actually feel like it. You have, yeah, you have to load the, the tendon. Because oh. that's how the tendon heals. Okay, so or it gets better. Okay, great. Tendon is one of those interesting things where it actually um, rest doesn't actually help it. Oh interesting. So it's a progressive progressive load. So I guess I gotta do like that. It's such an odd feeling. You can feel a little like movement on yeah. the bottom of my seat. So that, that there twitched. Yeah. So that's what leg day soreness feels like. Okay, so the acupuncture is done. That hurt a lot more than I thought it was gonna hurt. So I'm walking really funny. It feels like I got a tattoo on my butt cheek to match the other butterfly tattoo on my other butt cheek. Uh, so I guess my homework is more leg days. So now it's getting close to dinner time, which you guys know every night is pizza night. 
I know it sounds repetitive, but guess what guys, my life is repetitive. So instead of making pizza at home, we're actually one of my favorite restaurants in the world called Pizzeria Defina. They're gonna show us how to make some stuff. They won a bunch of awards at this Vegas thing for like best pizza in the world, best pizza for certain styles of pizza. So it'll be very interesting to see how they put it all together. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna be making today for appetizer is the meatballs. So what goes into the meatballs? The meatballs has a uh, wild pork, yeah. ground pork, chives, diced onions, mushrooms, focaccia and milk. Focaccia and milk? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So let's do it. Alright, so we have the meatball appetizer here. I absolutely love these things. The tomato sauce is unreal as well. Rich, moist, simple yet satisfying. There's a reason why I come here every year for my birthday. My birthday is in like a couple weeks. You better believe I'm coming back. Yeah. Okay guys, so for main course, we're gonna be having two pizzas. We're having the Fumbo, which is my favorite, but also something called the New Yorker, which is a new one for you guys, right? So what goes, what's like the difference between the two? So the New Yorker is a pan style crust. The main difference is that this has a lot more water than the Napolitana traditional style of crust. It is baked a lot longer, which makes it more crispy. We also use semolina flour, so it doesn't stick as much. This one goes in the pan in the oven, not the actual wood-fired oven? No, it doesn't go in the wood-fired oven. Okay. It goes in the uh, electrical oven. Okay, so and this is like a longer cooking process than like the traditional other ones that you guys do? Yeah. Okay, interesting. So let's see how this is uh, put together. Yeah, so right now I have semolina on the bottom. New Yorker is there are three different types of meat. There's a chorizo, okay. there is bacon, and soppressata. Chorizo is a spicy sausage. Soppressata is a spicy Italian sausage as okay. well. So first I put olive oil on the pan. I will spread it over with my hands. This uh, makes it not stick to the pan. This heats up to three to four people. We cut it into uh, nine slices. Okay. Challenge accepted. Yeah. yeah. So first I have to put tomato sauce on it. I have to put a little bit more semolina on top. This okay. adds more flavor and crunch to the pizza. Interesting, okay. And then now it's ready to put in the oven. So I put it in. All right, so eight minutes later and the crust is out of the oven. So what's the next step here? So the next step is we have to put more tomato sauce on it. The saucy ones. Yeah. And then we have to top the pizza. We put cheese on it. And then we put chorizo. Okay. Next we put soppressata. You can put the bacon. All right. How much am I going here? As much as you want. I usually go heavy on the meats, so. Heavy, yeah. All right. I want full strip or am I crumbling this thing up? No, nope. full like that? Oh, yeah. wow. This is like epic meal time, dude. <laughs> then next we put red onions. And cherry tomatoes, one of my favorites. I love stuff. So you guys don't do pineapple here, I see. No. So now it's ready. All right. And this one back in the oven, how long? Another eight minutes in the oven. And it's done? And then it's finished. The last thing I have to do, is I gotta bake it in the wood oven for two minutes. Okay, this is a girthy za right now. This is like for the hard gainers. I don't even want to know the macros of this thing. Looks like a good prospect for the 20k though, that's for sure. That's basically so close your eyes, vegans. There's a lot of pork on this thing. Oh wow. The semolina, like this is the first time you put it on like the actual base, adds a really nice crunch to it. It's really good. A lot different than any pizza I'm used to for sure. It's crazy, the actual cooking process of this thing. It goes in the oven twice, and then the wood-fired oven is crazy. So today we're gonna get Will to stretch out some pizzas for us and explain the Pumba. Yeah, so the Pumba is my favorite pizza. I come every year for that one specifically. The Pumba is stretched out on a Napolitana crust. It is 12 inches. There's San Maxano tomato sauce. There's garlic sh uh, shallots, wild boar meatballs. Which, which are is, unreal. unreal. Which is named after uh, well, it's 100% wild boar, and the whole pizza as a whole is, is named after the Lion King character, Pumbaa. So I'm gonna teach you how to stretch it out. First, you wanna form the crust. 
So you go around, put it down, and then you put some flour on it. Thank you. And then you start from the bottom, or top, and you go around. And pop the middle. So your non-dominant hand yep. is still, and yep. the dominant hand is right there. Yeah. You're laughing at me? I'm not laughing. You get about this size. Yeah. You gotta try to get as much of the flour off. So first you gotta put a scoop of uh, tomato sauce right in the middle of your pizza. Nice and little. then, yeah. And don't put the tomato sauce on the crust, otherwise you won't get a crust on it because okay. the tomato sauce yeah. weighs it down. First we put the cheese. This is Fiore di Latte. Okay. This is uh, mozzarella, fresh mozzarella. I have some like grade A cheese right there. It doesn't look like it's gonna cover all that. It looks, it's actually, when you get it, it's crazy how much it expands. And then I put the cremini mushrooms all around. Try to get it as close to the edge as possible because people don't like toppings in the middle of their pizza. Yeah. And we get shallots. That's a good technique there. Yeah. Wild boar meatball. Just, the meatball. Just one full one? Just one full one. I'm gonna crush it up. Yeah, Pumba. All right, unreal. They feel fairly similar. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So Parmesan. You have pizza at so many different places, but I always come back to this one. So is it just due to like, is it like, I mean, we watch it's just like dough, sauce, toppings. Is it just like the actual quality of the toppings? It's just, I'm like surprised how easy it is to put everything together. Yeah. Well, everything here takes a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, we do have to bake everything fresh daily. And how long do you take in the oven? 90 seconds. 90 seconds. Oh, man. Uh, so, Will, you gotta hold the peel very straight, okay. hold it flat, yeah. and you gotta go underneath it. It's as easy as five, you know? Okay, yeah. <laughs> then you put it in. Alright, one sec. You really need to get down like that, right? Yeah, you gotta keep the peel all flat. Go back there. Yeah. Nice. That wasn't that bad. That wasn't that bad at all. Now mine's coming up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Awesome. That's a Pumba, guys. This thing is like, once you try it, your life is going to be changed. So I can't wait to eat that. Okay. That's not bigger. It looks more like a flatbread. Yeah, it's longer. But yours actually looks way more. This is like, this one's more Instagram. This one's more just like, Looks like Stewie's head. All right, so this one's quite a lot different than the first one that we had. This one's unreal. This is like my favorite style of pizza for sure. You have to try this place out. So just that it's not me. Patrick, what do you think? Pretty good. The cheese is really, really good. Pretty good. So I can, I can actually taste the mushrooms. So I actually really like the taste of the mushrooms. Yeah. So that's nice. Eating and, the whole pumba. And Patrick's also the man behind all like the sick edits. So you gotta check him out. Link will be in the description for his channel too. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. So I just waddled my way out of the restaurant like how it should be done. So the meat sweats are in full effect. So let me know in the comments if you like this style of video because I love to make them. So if you guys enjoyed it, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.